Today we're looking at an 06 Chevy Impala. Uh, we're going to be addressing the strut and lower control arm as well as the tie, tie rod. Uh, the reason for that is the driver hit a curb at about 40 miles an hour and actually bent the entire front wheel here all the way back to where it was actually rubbing on the wheel well. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the lower control arm, the strut, as well as the tie rod and see if we can't get it straightened out. Okay, I'm first going to go ahead and get this car jacked up safely, support it on a jack stand, and go ahead and take the wheel off. Okay, once the wheel's off, my next step is going to be to take this caliper off. Um, what I always like to do before I remove calipers is I grab my C-clamp and I uh, just take a little bit of the pressure off of the caliper itself. That way you can get it on uh, easier when you're putting it back together. I'm just going to spin it a couple turns, just take some pressure off of it. See how I get a little movement there. Then I'm going to go ahead and take my 13 millimeter socket here and pop these two bolts off the back. Go ahead and just lift that and I'm going to set that out of the way for right now. Okay, for this caliper, since we're going to be removing most of this stuff, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this little bungee cord I have here. I'm going to go ahead and hook this on whatever I can hook it on. There's a couple little slots right here. I'm going to hook that right there. That way it's up and off the control arm and away from the strut. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pads out of the way. And I'm going to just going to grab some WD-40 or some lube and go ahead and spray all of the points that I'm going to be removing, the two bolts that are on the strut. I'm going to spray the tie rod end. I really want to get a lot of fluid on the lower ball joint bolt. That's going to be the hardest one to get disconnected. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and remove this bracket here and this rotor. You may be able to do this without removing it, but I'm going to go ahead and take it off so we got a better camera shot. And as well, it's this section isn't as heavy when I'm maneuvering it, maneuvering it around. Uh, these are usually pretty tight. This is a 15 millimeter on the back. I usually use a hammer. Break those loose. Just make sure you keep your wrench seated on there all the way. I usually hold my finger on it. Okay, those are loose. Okay, now that we got this bracket off, I'm going to grab my T30 Torx bit, star key, and I'm just going to pop this T30 out here. And we can take our rotor off. Okay, my next step is going to be to disconnect this lower ball joint here. This is usually, usually the hardest part uh, to, to get disconnected, and I want to try to break it free now while everything is still tight, the tie rod's hooked up, and everything's solid. Uh, before I do that, I want to point out one thing um, I was just noticing here. I went ahead and sprayed those with WD-40, the uh, rear bolts for the lower control arm. But as you'll see, this one is ripped and completely pulled towards the rear as well as this guy is completely twisted in its socket there so that's gonna explain why that wheel was rubbing on the wheel well okay I used a small little pair of needle nose and straightened the back side of that cotter pin out uh, I've learned that the side cuts work the best to remove these cotter pins just give, get it a bite you can pry them out 
pretty easily with the side cuts. Okay, that's out. I'm gonna grab an 18 millimeter and I'm gonna break this bolt loose. It's not, excuse me. I'm not gonna back it all the way out because what I want to do is be able to hit this control arm and see if it drops onto that bolt head, which will mean it's free. Okay, I've got it backed up enough to where I can see a gap under it. And usually what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit this, this aluminum part right here real hard with the mallet a couple times, uh, try to break things loose and then maybe give it a hit right here on the arm itself. Alright, those hits with the hammer did the trick. It uh, it did break free. As you can see, it is free. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the sway bar link end and then we're going to move on to this tie rod. Okay, to disconnect this sway bar link end, uh, I'm going to use a 13 wrench and a 13 socket. Uh, this thing is so far bent back that it's actually pushed up against the CV axle here. So I'm going to put my open end of my 13 on here and get the bottom with the wrench. Oh, look at that. The bolt head itself is completely ground off from rubbing. That might be a problem getting back on. Let's see if we can cut some threads into it as it's coming off, or we're going to have to go ahead and replace that. Okay, the next thing we're going to address is this tie rod. Um, there's a few things I want to note when removing tie rods and changing them. Uh, I'm going to scoot you in here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and count these threads and see how many threads I have uh, showing here. Okay, I have 19 threads showing. Another thing I want to confirm is I want to confirm that my new tie rod is the same size as the old one. So I can put it back on the same thread count, which it is. I have seen them where they're not, so be careful there. Now when removing this tie rod, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to back this nut all the way off. And the reason for that is, if you don't, and you break it loose first, um, sometimes that whole ball joint will spin and you'll have a hard time getting that nut off. Okay, now, they do make a special tool for removing these. If you don't have it and you're going to be replacing it, um, you can go ahead and hit this part. Um, this particular tie rod has a small little end on it, which you could actually put a socket on. Um, so you can't really mushroom the head too much to where it won't come out. But if there isn't, what I usually do is I'll take the nut and I'll put it on backwards and get it just flush with the bottom. That way you don't mushroom that head and it will still come out of its socket. Uh, a good thing to do first is hit it right here. That'll break it loose inside of there. Just little hits for vibration. And then once you've hit that a few times, you can go ahead and hit this and it should pop right out. Just like that. Go ahead and take the nut off. And you can take the tie rod completely out. Okay, now our tie rod is loose. You can lay that to the side for now. I'm going to go ahead and remove these bolts here holding the strut on. I'm going to use my impact gun here. I'm using a 13 16 impact socket. Right. Got those removed. Good. 
give those a little tap. Pop that guy up. Now our strut, which is kind of dirty, is free. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and just get that strut out of the way. I'm going to break these three 15 millimeter nuts loose up on top of the strut. And I'm going to take two of the three out. Now you see the strut lower, and once I take this third one out, it's going to fall. So go ahead and reach underneath, get your hand on it. And you can back it out, and there you have your strut. Okay, we have our strut laying on the ground. Um, we're going to have to compress these springs and transfer it over to the new one. However, first, let's go ahead and get that lower control arm off as well. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to remove this wiring for the ABS sensor. And if you just squeeze this little clip here, it can, you can pop it out of its socket. Your needle nose and disconnect this harness here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use a pair of side cuts and snip these zip ties. Looks like somebody zip tied this on here. Uh, you probably won't have that on yours. It'll probably be snaps. However, I'm gonna get those all broken free from the lower arm and get that out of the way so we can take that arm off. Okay, next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take that nut off that lower ball joint so it's loose so that lower arm can fall off. Okay, I got the nut off the lower ball joint. For the uh, back part of the arms, I got a 13-16 Simpack socket. I just put it on a ratchet here. I'm gonna go ahead and spin that. Now the other side, I got a 13 six. oops, excuse me. The back side is a 13-16. And the other side is an 18. I'm going to go ahead and back this one out. Okay, now I'm going to leave that nut in there. Excuse me, that bolt in there for now. Now on this side, on the bottom of this is actually a T55 star. I have one here handy if we need it, but what I'm going to do first is go ahead and just see if we can't break that nut loose. And that one is a 13 16 as well. Okay, it did turn. Let's see if our nut's turning. Yep, our whole nut's turning now, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that T55 on there. I got that lower arm loose now. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a bungee cord and go ahead and just kind of suspend this hub here. And snick it right through the hole that I used where the strut used to be. And I'm just gonna suspend that guy up out of the way. There we go. So now that he's out of the way, I can. I'm gonna grab my mallet. Let's see if I can't get these. There's that one, and there goes that one, and out comes our control arm. Okay, I got the lower control arm side by side here, and I'm not sure if you can see or not, but this one's got a nice bend in it where uh, the impact happened. Um, so this, this was definitely the culprit. 